Hey, welcome back. I'm Gabe Hollaby from the AWS Technical Evangelism team, and I'm joined now for this segment by several members of the Amazon Aurora team. Guys, I'll let you introduce yourselves. Hello, everyone. My name is Shyam Biswas, and I'm a senior product manager with Aurora. Hi, everyone. I'm Suresh Shekharan, and I'm a principal product manager with Amazon Aurora. And I'm Kevin Jernigan. I'm principal product manager for Amazon Aurora Postgres. Great. Well, thanks for joining me today to talk all about Amazon Aurora. Uh, first off, I think a number of our viewers probably aren't fully familiar with what Amazon Aurora is, so who wants to take the first question and explain what is Amazon Aurora, why did we build it? Uh, I'll, I'll start, and okay. these guys will correct me when I get it wrong. Um, so we, we built Amazon Aurora because customers were using our uh, RDS service, our relational database service for open source engines, MySQL and Postgres, and they were interested in uh, better performance, better availability, and better functionality in general uh, for those open source engines in our managed database environment. So, you know, being very much, uh, you know, very focused on what customers want, we, we took that to heart and built the Amazon Aurora project. And that started with uh, Aurora MySQL, uh, which went GA back in July of 2015, and then we added Postgres compatibility about a year ago, in October of last year. And so, we've done a lot of work along the way, not just in the basics of performance and availability, but we've added a lot of other features, uh, you know, which we're going to dive into in the next few minutes. Great, thanks. Uh, and uh, how is Aurora different from other databases that are on the market, both from an open source or commercial offerings? So the way to think about Aurora is it's giving you the performance and availability that you'd expect from a high-end commercial database, but with the price point and simplicity that you'd expect from open source. So if you were to compare it, for example, with MySQL and PostgreSQL, uh, Aurora is both MySQL compatible and PostgreSQL compatible, so there's no change for your application. But it gives you about 5x the performance uh, from a throughput standpoint to, Aurora MySQ uh, to MySQL, and about 3x that of yeah. PostgreSQL, which is phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, I actually uh, did a migration from PostgreSQL to Aurora at a previous mm -hmm. job, and we saw exactly that kind of improvement. And it's got several other features from an availability standpoint, which you typically only get with a commercial database. Things like you can survive the failure of an entire availability zone and still be available, that's fantastic. Yep. Uh, things like backtrack, where if you make an error, you can instantly rewind to a point in the past. Cool. I, I, uh, a key differentiator uh, I think we should highlight at the high level is that Aurora is a you know, native cloud optimized, native built uh, database. Comparing with other databases you see in the cloud, those are traditional on-premises databases that are just being run in the cloud. Yeah, this was purpose built. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Hey. Uh, so, I hear we recently announced an exciting new feature for Aurora. I mean, we've done a lot over the years, but uh, one very recently. Who wants to talk about that? I'll take a cue on that. Go so, ahead, Charlie. Uh, Aurora Global Databases, it's available right now. Um, it essentially allows you to span your Aurora database across multiple AWS regions. So, what that gets you is three key benefits I'm going to highlight that. First of all, uh, is that your replication latency between regions is going to be typically less than one second. What that means is that you can use Aurora Global Databases for scaling your reads closer to maybe your end customers. Yep. Um, another use case that we see uh, it being used for is disaster recovery. So I, I, we don't anticipate any time losing any region, but for whatever reason, if your primary database becomes unavailable, uh, in that case, you can promote your secondary region in a global database uh, within a minute, right? So that means you can quickly turn around even in case of large scale events. What I feel is the most important uh, benefit here is that there's no impact to the performance of your database with Aurora Global Databases. We provision uh, dedicated infrastructure in the storage layer which carries out the replication for you, which means in turn, your database instances, database resources are fully available to serve your application workloads. Great. Uh, and uh, we, what else do I want to mention? Uh, if we have a really large uh, critical business application, can Aurora support that? I mean, it's, uh, it sounds like it's definitely something that's going to be attractive to people who are using MySQL or Postgres today, but what if they're uh, using some other enterprise offering? Absolutely. So we have several customers who have moved from commercial databases mm -hmm. to you know the, uh, Aurora MySQL and Aurora Postgres, okay. right? And uh, think of like the largest scale applications and databases, right? So internet scale companies like yeah. Netflix, right? Um, they are using Aurora. 
it. Yeah. So it's, it's certainly been used for most critical workloads you can imagine. Do you guys but, want to add something? Yeah, a, a great example is Amazon.com. Yeah. Which, um, specifically the fulfillment centers where we ship all the packages mm -hmm. uh, to our customers, um, more than 90% of those fulfillment centers have now migrated uh, to Aurora Postgres. So most packages everybody's receiving in the mail now are being actually delivered on Aurora Postgres. Powered by Aurora. They're yeah. powered by Aurora now. The nice. one thing I'd add is if you have an application that's running on a commercial database and you're looking to migrate it to Aurora, a shout out to two services, Schema Conversion Tool and Database Migration Service, which can aid you in the process as well. Great, thanks for mentioning that. Uh, let's talk about a few other uh, releases that are notable that we've done over uh, the last year. Uh, performance Insights, Backtrack, Parallel Query, uh, any of those catch your eye that you want to mention or talk about in more detail? Yeah, absolutely. All of those are very exciting features. So I'll start with Performance Insights. Sure. Um, you know, several of our customers say Amazon's a fantastic, or Aurora's a fantastic fully managed service, but we want a little bit more insight into what's happening with the database so we can tune our queries. Yep. So in response to customer feedback, we announced Performance Insights earlier this year. It's available for both of the Aurora's. And what it really lets you do is it gives you very fine-grained visibility into where your resources are going, which query, which uh, bottleneck you, you may have, and it really gives you insight into how you tune query performance in Aurora. So that's a very exciting feature. I can also say uh, when I migrated in, in a previous job to uh, Aurora Postgres and we used Performance Insights, I found it really helpful. Yeah. So thanks for working on that. Absolutely. <laughs> What about a parallel query or backtrack? Oh, parallel query is a very exciting feature. Um, so, as you may know, one of the unique things about Aurora is we have a purpose-built storage layer that sits under the database engine. And you know, it's distributed across three AZs, hundreds or thousands of machines. And historically, this has been great for us because as I mentioned, it lets us tolerate the outage of an entire data center if it were ever to happen. But the core insight was, hey, we have all these machines. They also have a ton of compute power. Yeah. What can we do with them? And so what Parallel Query does is it takes the queries that would normally run on one core in one machine and pushes it down across these hundreds or thousands of machines yep. and runs them in parallel. And you can get 10 to 100x performance improvement in your query latency, which and, is... Uh, I've, uh, am I right in mentioning that right now this is only supported with uh, MySQL Aurora? Uh, oh, but uh, Yes, it is. Yeah. It's coming soon. Coming soon for, coming soon for Aurora Postgres, for Aurora Postgres. And, more, awesome. and more generally, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, Aurora MySQL launched about two years before Aurora Postgres, so the Aurora Postgres team is catching up. That's right. And and one of those features that we're catching up on is Parallel Query, another is Backtrack, which uh, you know, Suresh can tell us more about Backtrack as well. Yeah. Backtrack is a really interesting use case. So, you know, oftentimes customers, you know, I've done it, you've probably done it, you make some small error, you drop a table, you delete a record, and you don't really want to do it. And so what's the quickest way to go back? So before Backtrack, You'd have to go to a point in time restore, right? Which is you go to an old snapshot, you restore it into a new database, and then you play your logs forward until the point of error. This can take a long time, right? Depending on how old your backup was, how many changes that have happened. Backtrack is instantaneous. It's online, so you don't have to spin up a new database, you just rewind your database. And again, we take advantage of our unique storage architecture. It's a log structured file system, so you just tell the system your log sequence number is now a previous point in time and it works like magic. Awesome, okay. The beautiful yeah. thing about it is it's not destructive. It's almost like a job dial, you can move back and forth. Yep. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, talk a little bit more about Aurora Global Databases, because uh, I think this is an exciting release. Uh, how does this work under the hood? I think the viewers might want to know a bit more about that. A global Databases? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So with Global Databases, essentially what we have done is we have extended the same replication scheme we use within a region okay. to create your database across multiple regions, right? And so with that, what we have also uh, achieved is that we have put in dedicated infrastructure in the storage layer itself, which carries out the replication for you. So we take the redo log stream that's going down to your storage nodes yep. and you know, extend it further. Um, it also means that if there's, let's say, a network interruption or outage, we can tolerate it uh, for a certain duration of time and reestablish connection if that happens to you. And how often does that generally happen anyway? Uh, usually we haven't seen that yeah. happen like you know, but there were incidents like a few years back, a submarine cut through sea, undersea cables, mm -hmm. right? So things like that could happen. In that situation, of course, you can you know go to your secondary region and promote that, as I was mentioning previously. Yep. One thing to note here is that depending on how much replication lag is there, typically less than a second, 
you might lose that amount of data. Of course, that right? makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we have a demo of setting up of Aurora Global Databases, right, in yeah. the console. Uh, so go ahead, let's go ahead and switch to showing uh, that demo now, and uh, we'll talk you through what you're seeing. Sure. Uh, so creating the global database is really straightforward. So here what we see is the RDS console. Click on Create Database. You'll select Aurora MySQL. You'll see a new option right now. That's a new flow for creating databases, Aurora databases. So once you're in that flow, you would notice that with MySQL 5.6 compatible, you get an option of regional global. Let's go with global. I'll give it a name, uh, global database 2. Go and enter the username, password, confirm the password. And rest of the details are fairly straightforward. I've enabled uh, replica, um, encryption. You would also see a bunch of um, instance types that are available to you. Essentially R4 and R3 family of instances. I'll go with the smallest that's there, R4 large. Um, Aurora Replica is essentially a reader node which gives you high availability within a cluster. So for now, I'm not creating that. And uh, publicly accessible, like if you're testing your database, you want to connect from your own desktop, you know, turn it on. but. For better security, once you are in production, of course, scrape it uh, at no, only your uh, application servers within the same VPC should be talking to your database. Let's go ahead and create the database. Uh, this process could take a few moments as the database is created and comes up. What I've done is I've recreated a global database. And what I'm going to show here is that uh, how you can go ahead and add a region to a global database. Right. So we selected the database there, click on Add Region. And then you'll see the options. So right now, Global Database is, uh, is available in four regions. Uh, that's US East, uh, Northern Virg uh, Virginia, then Ohio, uh, then US West, and uh, Ireland. So I'm going to create it in Ireland. So the setup is your primary region is in uh, Ohio, and the secondary region is in uh, Ireland. That's it. The rest of the configurations are uh, pre-filled for you. If you want, you can, of course, go in and change those configurations. Uh, but uh, for now, I'm not going to. And uh, let's just create that. Give it a few seconds. And it should be added there. Right, let's go. Yeah, you see that there's a notification up, up top that is being created. Yeah. So I'm going to go to another global database, which is all set up. Right, You have your primary database and your secondary also added there. Yeah. Right? So you see the display there, the regions you are present in. Uh, going to the details, uh, one interesting thing that you can see here is what's your application lag, right? and how many writes are happening to your database, and um, how much, you know, uh, yeah, so first thing is CPU utilization. You are able to see that. These are the metrics that are being displayed. Let's go in and type in global, and so you'll see These are the, the CloudWatch metric. metrics. Yeah, the ones okay. which are relevant to global database, right? Nice. So you see your build usage for I/O and um, data transfer. A pretty constant replication lag. Pretty constant replication lag there. That's right? nice. Yeah, and that was 80 milliseconds. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, can you talk about any customers that have been uh, looking into using our global database? Absolutely. So, Intuit is very excited about this feature. They are uh, going to use this for disaster recovery primarily. The other use case and scenario they are planning to use it for is their payment information. So their payment information is not updated very often, but it needs to be available with very low latency in multiple regions, right? Uh, so they are going to use global databases uh, to you know, make this information available closer to their customers, coast to coast, right? So their uh, you know, system sits in one coast, They'll be able to read it in another coast within under a second, right? That's the replication really that we're looking at. Yeah. yeah, that's a pretty nice feature, and just mm -hmm. being able to have a truly global, uh, globally replicated data set for you know fast queries from wherever you happen to be in the world. Yeah, uh, it's really nice that that Very got released. Exciting. Yep. Um, we have uh, a couple of questions that have come through in the chat. I'll just uh, ask some of the ones that came out here. Uh, Alder87 on Twitch asks, "How many of our serverless DBs are you allowed to have in one account?" Does anyone know the answer to that on stream? I don't know off the top of my head, but I don't think the limit should be any different for serverless versus regular Aurora. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm going to jump in there and just uh, yeah, go ahead, Kev. highlight mm -hmm. that um, for Aurora Postgres, we just launched a public preview of serverless with Aurora Postgres. So serverless has been GA for Aurora MySQL for a couple months. We're now in a preview with serverless for Aurora Postgres as well. That's exciting. I don't even think I was on top of that news yet. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that makes me really happy too. I'm a big Postgres fan. Sweet. Um, what about uh, the uh, the Roar Serverless REST API? That was another uh, pretty new uh, change that I think is some customers are going to be excited about that. Does anyone want to talk about that? Absolutely. Can we take it? Yeah, so that API is initially available with Aurora MySQL serverless, um, but it allows you to, instead of connecting with a MySQL protocol and a MySQL endpoint, yep. you can make an HTTP call um, to access your Aurora MySQL uh, database. We'll be adding that to Aurora Postgres, and actually the plan is to extend that to other RDS engines over time. Cool, um, so uh, yeah. what are some use cases that, that that's going to be really uh, helpful for? Think of situations where it's going to be hard for you to go create persistent uh, connections to a database, right? So Aurora Serverless has got a lot of interest from customers, a lot of usage, because it lets you scale up and scale down a database uh, right. automatically in response to load. But before the serverless endpoint, the, the REST API, you still had to connect to the database. And you have many applications, serverless applications, where you're firing off a Lambda function, you don't really want to go create a MySQL connection at the time, you just want to call, do a REST API call. So this is perfect for serverless applications, where you may have a Lambda function, you may have some other function where you don't really want to go pound the database with many connections. But you just want to get the same response time. Yeah, great. Uh, I do want to add one more thing there. Please. Is that um, there's also a query editor now available on the console. Mm -hmm for Aurora Serverless, which underneath, of course, uses uh, these REST APIs, so you can query it from the console. Oh, that's nice, yeah. okay. Um, so I, let me ask a, maybe a, a more deep technical question about Aurora Global Databases and failover. Uh, and this, just from my perspective, if we have the, the right, there's always only one right master, right? That's correct. And so I'm writing to one right master, and that lives in one region. Mm -hmm. And if I need to fail over to uh, rights uh, or to uh, a different, I need to promote a different right master right. because of a region problem, yep. then I'm suddenly going to be writing to uh, a master in region B. Mm -hmm. There's going to end up with some rights that were in region A that uh, never made it to my new master, right? Correct. Now, what's the advice for how to handle that situation? If it, I mean, it's unlikely to happen, mm -hmm. uh, but is it, is it an automatic failover? And if it, if it does or if it doesn't, how do we handle that? That's a good point. Uh, the failover is not automatic. Mm. Uh, the reason behind that is that uh, regional, you know, if you're trying to switch regions for your database, that's a pretty dramatic step. Yeah. Right? Your application is potentially running in that region, right? That's right. And you don't want to then, you know, have to repoint to another region and that latency is involved with that, all that complexity, mm. right? So we want customers to take this action, right? They, inter they intercept this, they figure out that there's a problem in the region and then they fail over. Okay. Of course, as you mentioned, if uh, there are rights going on into the primary region and you have you know cut off and failed over, whatever is in flight is not going to be able to be you know applied to the other side, which means you could take a little bit of data loss, right? Sure. Typically under a second. That's, that's right. how much you would lose. If you're doing it in a planned manner, uh, our advice would be that you stop your application yeah. from writing, so quiesce your database in the primary region, and then fail over, right? So make sure that it catches up, yeah. the application lag is zero, and at that point you can fail over so there's no data loss. Okay, that makes sense to me, thanks. Um, wrapping up, because uh, we're near the end, uh, I think uh, something that's worth mentioning is that Aurora continues to be the fastest growing service at AWS. And if you'll indulge me in a little bit of a joke, uh, my daughter's name is also Aurora, and I like to say she's the fastest growing human in my family. <laughs> so uh, that's nice. Um, yeah, so I think we're good to wrap up. I'm just going to check to see if we have any questions from the stream that would be good to field before we say goodbye. I think we look pretty good. All right, so guys, thank you so much for coming on today to have a chat about Aurora, and I look forward to all the exciting new stuff we'll be able to talk about again this time next year. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank Great. you. Thank Thanks you. for watching this year. Thanks for coming, tuning Thanks in. Everyone.